Hi, this is Kathy Quinn with Floriani. Floriani is the division of R&K Distributing, and I want to welcome you to this week's Project of the Week. Well, as most of you have probably realized, we had a brand new update across the board last week. And when I mean across the board, uh, Total Control U, the Total Quilter, Craft and Cut, and my design album, we gave you amazing updates in all the programs. So I want to point out this week, what I want to talk to you about is what did we do for you that you've been requesting? Uh, things that you have asked us to change in the software. Well, I'm going to show you those items today. Next week, I'll be talking about all the power we've given you with fonts. And we'll keep moving until we've covered all the updates. But the first thing I want to do is if you want to check and see if you have the latest update, you can always check and see what is my update? What number do I have? I'm going to go to help and the word about and I've got 3230. Now I can come in here and say help, check for update And there we go, it's telling me 3230 is the latest version. You will click here to download it now. What that will do is it will bring up a box, ask you if you want to save it, go ahead and save it. And then you can double mouse click on it and it will install. So that's how you need to check and make sure you've put the latest update in and that's true for all the programs. Now I want to show you the things you've been requesting and we have given you. The first one I think is very, very exciting um, for what we have put in here for you. And I think probably the, mo the biggest frustration we hear is about the properties and the sequence view boxes. You'll be up here clicking around and doggone it, I closed it. Now the question comes, where do I open it? And if you're in a class and you're trying to come back and figure out how to open that back up, the instructor has already given two more instructions that you've missed because you lost your sequence view or you lost your properties box. So that can be frustrating. So we have now given you the ability to make those not move. So what you're going to do is go to Tools, Preferences. Now I'm going to go to the word View. And here I'm going to say Lock Properties, Sequence View, and Library Windows. When I select this, I want you to notice the ability to close these boxes just disappeared. Now I can still resize the windows within the pane, but I can no longer close them. So if you want to turn that off when you go to class and stuff so that you don't inadvertently close them and miss some instructions, that's how easy it is now. Again, we go to Tools. Well. There we go, and preferences, and then we'll go to grid, I'm sorry, view, and select or deselect, depending if you want to be able to close it or not, your lock property sequence view. So that's number one. Now we're going to come in, and I'm going to show you another big one. One of the things that we uh, had people requesting is when they're using artwork, backdrop files and they want to go ahead and create a design out of these a lot of times they want to use the grid but the minute you bring in a piece of artwork or a backdrop it sits on top of your grid so you lose that ability so we're going to come in here and I'm going to go ahead and bring in I'll bring in this butterfly I'm going to select him and I'm going to make him big four inches now I want you to notice we have now put it where it goes underneath the grid. The grid will now be on, on top for you. And if you need some guidelines, remember you can pull guidelines down. So let me go ahead and just turn off my grid for a minute so you can see the guidelines. I might want guidelines. I might want to say, okay, I want to pull down a, well, let me left mouse click and drag it down. I want to set a guideline on top of his wings. And I want to set another guideline by just holding your left mouse key and dragging. Might want to put one here. Now again, notice my guideline is now on top. It's no longer behind it. 
So your grid lines and your guidelines are now on top of your artwork to make it easier for you if you're trying to create from this and you need to click around it and you want to use those lines. So we have added that in because that was a big request. Now probably the biggest request that we have had from everyone is if I have a design in here, I'm going to go ahead and bring me in a design. I've got a design in here. What's always happened is when we go to File, Save As, it comes up as a WAF file. That is our default. It always saves to WAF. So then you'd save it to WAF and then you'd come back and you'd save it again to your machine format. Well, a lot of people are saying, why can't I change my default format? Well, you can now. We have fixed that for you. We're going to go to Tools, Preferences, and right here I have Format. Now in here under the Format tab, I'm going to deselect this for a minute. I'm going to put this on WAF. This is how it's always been. So when I go to Save, if I go to File, Save As, WAF is down here. So I would name it, save it as a WAF, then I would come back and I'd go File, Save As again, and I would pick my machine format which has been kind of frustrating for some of y'all. Now we always want to save to a WAF format. Anything we do, because if I need to go convert that to a different format, because I might have two brands of machines, or I want to work on that file, if I save it as a WAF, I have a lot more ability in there. So I'm going to now go to Tools, Preferences, <clears throat> And I'm going to save my default format I want to be for my multi-needle. Now notice when I pick multi-needle, this box become a, becomes available. It says, should I auto-save the WAF format at the same time? Absolutely. Now it's going to save automatically to your default format and a WAF all at the same time. So let's say OK. Now when I come up here and say File, Save As, Notice there's my baby lock multi needle. Now I can name this design, save it, and it will save both files at the same time with the same name. One will be a WAF, one will be my PES 9 multi needle. How cool is that? That is something y'all have been requesting. Well, we want you to know that we listen to you and we only want to make it better every time. Not only do we want to add new features, we want to make the features you have easier for you if there's something you're a little bit frustrated with. Now here's something I'm loving that we just did. And we've done a lot more with lettering than I'm about to show you. But I'm just showing you right now things that we have done that you've requested to make life easier. I'm going to click on screen for my text. Now notice our text box looks very different. Of course we're going to type in our text here. There's what our alphabet looks like. This is where I can hover and see what characters are available. You're used to all of this, but we got some new boxes here. Do you see this top box where it says All Fonts? Now if I want to see all the fonts, I'm just going to drop down the box under it, and there's all the fonts I've got. Okay. Now if I want, let's say I just want to look at my small fonts. I need to do some small lettering. I'm just going to select Small. Now the only fonts I'm going to have to look through, it's going to gather them all for me so I can look through those and select from them. I can come back in here and say, well, I want to look at all the fonts that look handwritten. There they are. There's all my handwritten look fonts. So how fun is this? I, I'm going to do something and I need block. So there's my block. Let's look at all of our block fonts. So you can see this is going to be a real help for you to go through when you just want to categorize something other than looking through the entire list of fonts. You can go right to what you're looking at and now you can start to play with it. So this is another new feature that we've added where y'all have had, you know, which it was easier to work with all of these fonts. I wish we could first you ask us, can you give us letters to denote what they are? Can you give us some, some um, significance in front of them? Let me get all fonts here. So you notice in front of them, handwritten, outline, script. You ask us to designate categories for you, and we did. Now, of course, the fonts themselves are in alphabetical order. 
So if you needed a font with an outline that started with O, you had to come all down to the bottom to Western Flair. But now if I need all fonts that have outline ability, I could just pick um, outline fonts. And now it's going to show me all the fonts that have the ability to have an outline around them. So as you can see, we've made this again. What's our word? We want it easy. We want those one-click wonders. So these are some just some of the features we've added to help you um, clear up some features you already had, but that you wanted them to be just a little easier. So that's what we've added in here, and I've got tons of stuff to show you over the next couple of weeks. But I also wanted to show you in, we're going to go to My Design Album. The biggest uh, request we've had in My Design Album, remember My Design Album is a wonderful cataloging program. Makes it so easy to find designs, to look at stuff you're looking for, and it has the ability to add keywords. Well, that is so cool, but the, the challenge for most of y'all was, let me just go in here and find something in here, some birds. Okay, here was the deal. Um, if I look at this, notice this has bird dove. This one has bird red. Uh, this one has bird hummingbird. But each of these I had to select one at a time and add the keywords to it. So we wanted to make life much easier for you. So I'm going to come in here to these children's. And I'm going to go in and I'm going to say, let's see. I'm going to select... Uh, how do I want to try and do this? Okay, I'm going to select the snail. Whoops, I don't want to open it. Just holding my control key, I'm going to get the octopus. And let me see what else I've got here. Turtle. Okay, so there's three that I've selected. Now I want to edit the keyword, and I'm going to add, um, I'm going to put in C creatures. Okay. Oops, if I could spell that and make it easier. Now I'm going to add in sea creatures and I'm going to say OK. Now I want you to notice when I select the octopus, he says sea creature. When I select the turtle, sea creature, the crab, sea creature. So we've got sea creatures here. So now if I want to type in here and look under sea, there my sea creatures came up. Now. I'm going to put creatures because that shark wasn't a creature. He had to do with the sea, but he wasn't a creature. So now we can take a des designs and add one keyword to as many designs at the same time as we want. And we can add multiples. I could say, let's go back here, and I could say, um, let's select all of these. Let me select all of these that are in here. And I want to add the keyword children's. Okay, so I'm going to add children's to all of these. Now, on some of them, I'm going to put, um, holding down my control key, I'm going to select these and I'm going to edit a keyword. And I'm going to add the word in here to keyword school. Okay. Now, I can come in here and type in children, and you can see all of them comes up. But I could also type in school, and I have just the children's designs that are school designs. So now you can select as many as you like, add a keyword to all of them at one time. How exciting is this? This is what was missing in this program, because before we had to catalog them, add a keyword one design at a time. And it was very time consuming. While it was awesome that we could even do that, it's gotten better. Why? Because you've requested it. So as you request things, we do hear you, we do work on them. So these are things to make these programs better for those of you that already own them. And next week we'll start looking at some of the exciting brand new features that we've added in. And look at the updates across the board. Make sure you update all your software because we gave you stuff and everything. And next week when I start showing you some of the new features, I'll tell you when it carries over to another program. So I look forward to talking to you next week. Have a wonderful week.